Uh, one of the main ideas in this one uh, that we're going to use, you're going to use this a lot in the problems that you're going to practice tonight, is uh, like if you had a limit that was uh, where x was approaching c, and uh, your function was just, I'm going to say b, like it's some constant, or b is just a constant. See, b and c are constants. And uh, you guys already know this. I'm just kind of formalizing it for you guys. If the function was just b and you're approaching c, it doesn't matter where c is, you're still going to get b. Now, why is that? Because if you graph b, I don't know where b is at, but we're going to say he's right there. If that's b, it doesn't matter where c is, you're always going to be approaching b, right? So that's what that one says. The other one uh, that's important, we're going to say as x approaches c of x. And so x is an identity function. Whatever you plug in, that's what you get. And so that means you're going to get a c when you plug that in. So um, what does that look like graphically? Um, that's the identity function right there. If I plugged in c, I would get c. Right? And so if, um, if these are your two functions, if this is your function x or this is your function a constant, you know how it's going to behave. So let's take this guy right here and split them up using the basic limit laws and see if we can uh, find the limit of that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this radical into a power and I'm going to take him out of the limit. So he's going to look like this. We're going to have, uh, it says a limit as x approaches 2. I'm going to rewrite this a couple times. You might want to do just the first one and last one or you can do all of them I suppose. Um, and then I'm going to take the power out. So it's just going to say x to the third plus 5x plus 7. And we have the one-half power on the outside. Does that make sense why the one-half power is out there? Yeah. Because instead of having a, that square root, we can just um, we can have a one-half power on the outside. So I took the one-half power out of the limit. And so he's just waiting for the answer. So once we get the answer, we'll do the one-half power. Well, we can use the basic limit laws and split it up even more. Um, let's split up the inside. We have the limit as x approaches 2 of x to the third, plus the limit as x approaches 2 of 5x, plus, we're using the sum law right here, the limit as x approaches 2 of the last one, which is 7. And then we're going to raise all this to the 1 half power. Okay, now there's one more. I have to write it one more time because I'm trying to be explicit. Yeah, go ahead. What's your question? Do we put the three? The three? The uh, right. What do you want to do with the three? Can you put it in front? Ah, uh, no. You're thinking oh, like logarithms. Oh, no, no. We're not dropping the three like a logarithm. Instead, we're going to do like what we did right here. We're just going to take the one half out of the limits, so we don't have to. So he's not like trying to confuse you. Um, so we have uh, the limit as x approaches two and. Uh, of x, and we're taking out the 3. So now the 3 is on the outside of the limit. Um, and this is nice, because you guys know what this equals, right? Because look, that's just the identity function. It's just an x in there. As x approaches 2 in the identity function, what do you get? Just 2. All right. So uh, the next one, we're going to take the 5 out of the limit, because that's, a, that's a, a factor that you can take out of the x. So we just have x in the middle, or x in the limit. And then we have the last one. We can't really change. That one's just going to stay the same. The 7. And then at the end, we're going to t raise everything to the 1 half power. All right. So um, like I said earlier, if we have the identity function in there uh, and you're approaching 2, we're just going to get 2. So it's going to say 2 to the third power plus, uh, again, we have the same thing right here. That's going to be 2 but it's times 5, so 5 times 2, plus, and then what do we get for this last one? 7. Yeah, just 7. Okay, so we have the 7. So this becomes an 8 plus 10 plus 7. Oh, wait, I almost forgot 1 half power, right? All right, so that's the same as the square root. So we get the square root of 25. We add all these up, we get 25. So the square root of 25 equals 5. That's our answer. Okay, so the two questions so far were, uh, why is that 5.2? That's not 5.2, it's 5 times 2. Sorry, my writing's not that great. And then, where'd the 1 half come from? If you um, can think back, whenever you have a square root, 
you know that the root is a 2. Then we don't put the index number there usually for a square root, but the, but the index number is a 2 if there's, if there's no number there. Um, sometimes you have a cubed root, okay? For both of these, you would get a fraction exponent. This would be 1 over 2, and this would be x uh, to the 1 over 3. Okay, so the three root numbers are always on the denominator of the fraction. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, so, um, oh, and the power is 1 here because we don't have a power. If we had a power of 5 right here, then we would put 5 right there. Or even if the power of 5 was right here, you would put a 5 right here. It's the same idea. Okay, and that 2 is always there because that was the square root. So I just rewrote this. I got rid of the square root, and I put the 1 half power there because I knew I'd be able to take it out over here. Okay?